Hello and welcome to Let's Learn Together. I'm Jelpia and today we're going to learn about art journaling, sometimes called junk journaling. Art journaling is an art form where you express your ideas, inspirations, memories, or thoughts in a visual format. You can use found objects, paint, draw, crayons, whatever other thing that strikes your fancy. There's really no rule to art journaling. It is kind of what you make it. The art journaling that we're going to do today is going to be a little more like a collage. Let's get started. Here are some items that you may need. Notebook. Pins. Scissors. Ruler or flat edge. Art supplies. Stamp blocks. Stamps. Ink pads. Other journaling supplies, such as papers, washi tape, transfers, glue and adhesive, some sort of binder clip or clothespin to help hold the book open if your book tends to want to close on itself. So the first thing that I always do and I act like I have a lot of experience with this. This is only like the second time I've done it. But I enjoyed making collages a lot as a kid. So this was the one I did last month. And then I'm going to actually skip a page, I think. page. I'll probably come back at some point and fill those other ones in. But my book has a tendency to kind of flop. So I'm going to put a binder clip kind of right there. So one of the first things I like to do is kind of set out my stuff that I would like to use. Um, I have this little like dictionary library series, little pieces of paper. Um, I'm going to pull the writing one out, um, which is like the dictionary. Well, with title, title and writing. And then I want to grab got a couple in here that are Kind of like, there we go, like a manuscript or something. I, I like that one. Pop that one back in. Here we go. Let's look at that one. There we go. I like those. Anytime I'm dealing with a project, uh, one of the first things I like to do is um, decide my color scheme. Um, since I know this is going to have a lot of like browns, kind of taupe colors, um, and beige. Um, I think I'm going to go for some brighter colors. Um, some of my favorite inks, I have this really pretty blue, um, which looks pretty dark in the pen, but it's a really pretty light blue. So I'm going to try to find, there we go, blue, my two blues, and then let's go ahead and get the browns out. Simple brown, gold. And 
then I think I'm going to go with a red. For a little splash of color. And then I'm going to get my oil pastels out. Oil pastels are basically fancy crayons. If you have a kid, feel free to raid their Crayola bucket or marker bucket. I have raided my daughters on several occasions. So let's go ahead and pick a couple of the reds. Get the dark red. I think I want a couple of these medium blues. Then let's grab the browns. And then let's grab a couple of these grays. Black. Light gray. All right, so that's kind of my all my stuff out. So these are going to be kind of on top. Um, that'll be like one of the last things I do. So I'm going to set those to the side. And what I want to look for first is kind of my big, kind of what's, what's going to kind of fill most of the pages. So yeah, I want to figure out what is going to fill kind of the background. I definitely want to, I think this is going to wind up being kind of sheer. So if I put some color behind this. I think it's going to show through a bit. So I want to put this kind of on top of something else. So let's um, let's, what's my I kind of do like that amount, but I don't necessarily want to do a whole page. Let's find an article that is going to fill up something kind of like that. Let's see. This one. Check my size. That's gonna fill it in very nicely. this out. Not grab things today. I'll leave that sentence off. So this is basically newsprint, so I would be able to color on it. Kind of cutting. You could use actual newspaper, um, like local, local newspaper, misprints, if you can get them, anything like that. So, I don't wanna this side up a little bit. And then I want to trim this side up a little bit. So 
So I like things that span across the center. Not everyone does. If you don't, feel free to keep it on a single page. Once again, this is a very flexible project. I think I'm gonna... I want to put it in the top. So I'm gonna put that off for just a second. Cut off. I'm going to cut off a little more of the top. Let's grab. Backwards. Try to use the double-sided tape on the correct direction, otherwise it won't work. I just had it. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue down. If your glue is stopped up, take a like a needle or a pin, like a sewing pin, stick it down the hole a little bit, and then kind of wiggle it. And then set that somewhere, not back in your thing until you clean it. Here. There we go. Ah! There we go. And then don't put it upside down unless you mean to put it upside down. Feel free. Come on.
All right, so I've got that, and then I'm gonna take my pastels and kind of color, I think kind of down in here. Actually, no, I think I'm gonna color up in here. I'm gonna color the sky. I'm just kind of being messy about it. I'm not being exact. I hope that's still got sky down here. Good. Let's grab a different shade of blue. Let's go with a darker one. In here a little bit. Come in here lighter. And let's grab. There we go. Come in with the gray, kind of mix them in. Get an effect of almost like clouds. See the other really great thing about this is if you're wanting to try a new kind of like technique, you know, if you're wanting to try watercolor or something like this, it gives you a little, a little thing that you can practice on in with your other stuff. And if it doesn't turn out, if you don't like it, just throw something else on top of it, which is pretty much what I'm going to wind up doing. I'm going to wind up covering part of this up. Um, and then I think I want to kind of hit these roofs with the red. A lot of times the or of the places that I visited, these older roofs were in a clay. Here. And then look brown. Very light. Here. Different shade of darker brown over here. Shade of brown. There we go. Kind of a quick. I want to make it look kind of like one of those old polarized um, where they've taken an old picture and then they've like hand colored it in. I want to leave the actual clock in question kind of without color. So, let's see. I do want to add, still add a little bit of color down here to start with. Take my 
smudgies. Kind of. Light. I personally don't do well if I have just a plain sheet of white paper, so I like to throw something down, even if I know I'm going to wind up kind of going over it later. Go! Shade of blue. Let's see. All right, so I'm kind of happy with that. So let's see. What strikes my... Oh, here we go. Others in here that catch my eye. Let's see. I think I'm going to wind up putting one of those on there. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that on first. Straight. Straight. I'm going to set that to the side under something heavy. And then I want to put something along here because it keeps trying to kind of catch up. I think I'm going to do this washi tape. Start it. Want to do it at a slight angle. So I started up closer, so the edge is kind of like right here, and then the edge is like right here on the other end. So it very slight angle. And this is where we're going to use like a straight edge or something. Oh, almost got it. I do really like this stuff, so I'm going to put tear it off, it kind of like up here. Problem is, is it doesn't always like the mixed media. It's not heavy enough. Scissors on it for the moment. I 
think I want to try to leave this section a little bit blank. Let's save that one. Let's see. I feel like they're cutouts. Let's see if they are stickers. Yeah, excellent. Our shear. So that. Let's see if it's. Ooh, sewing machine. Ah, uh, standard sewing machine. Kind of. Neat. Let's Stick down the edges and crumple it up a little bit. One more, a little bit more up here. Sure that's gonna fit okay on the uh, not quite. So let's shift that over just a bit.
Ooh, that stuff did not like the glue. <laughs> Pop stickers down. One more, I'm gonna do one of the banners. I'm not sure if you can see it. Let's see if I can get up close. As you can see here, it's sheer, so you can see through. See the colors kind of showing through. So let's go ahead and pop open one of these. So to use these kind of stamps, you just kind of peel them off and then put them on the uh, base. You can kind of see these have little grid lines on them. This. I'm gonna do this one in. Do this one in gold. Let's see if the gold works. After I get it all over my hands too. Yeah. Pop that. One. Make sure I get all of it covered. That was pretty light. Let's go. I'm going to try to do is offset it just a little bit. There we go. You just take a washcloth and kind of wipe that off. Let's see. Let's do some ink splatters and I think I'm gonna do those in a dark brown.
So I got it just kind of two splots, and I happened to catch it right in between two colors. Kind of see where I'm... Going. And I'm really bad. I tend to mix my colors willy nilly. Don't like that one as much, too. There we go. Happy with that. Let's throw this back on. Clean those up later. I'm done with this one. I don't think I'm going to use any on this one. Um, other than I like the splatters on that one too. Um, slide the uh, covering back on. So, set this to the side because I think I am done with those. So, since this ink pen was our, um, my inspiration for this one, let's see. Kind of tuck this one so we can tuck it into there. There we go. There. And I'm going to go back and probably redo that stamp. There we go. That. That's what I want. I think I'm actually just going to cut that part off. I like the effect of some of it going over and then some of it like being chopped off at the edge.
tuck it. And then I'm going to write a couple of words. I want to write. Right. So nothing fancy to write, one must read. So you could definitely leave a lot more open space if you did want to be able to do like a journaling. Leave like a section here or put up or even just put a piece of paper on top that you can then journal on. Um, kind of up to you. Now this is kind of still wet so what I will wind up doing is leaving it out overnight just open like this um, so that I can um, let it dry. But that is the finished project. And that was the completed project. I strongly suggest even if you don't feel that your artist, artistic or crafty raid your kids art bucket put something together. You don't have to buy anything fancy or anything like that. You could literally buy uh, calendars from last year and cut them up for the project. There's lots of found objects that you can use, recycle, to be able to make this project. Um, but I do find it very, personally, I find it very fun and relaxing to be able to just kind of get out there and make a mess make mistakes. If you notice, there was a couple times where I just was like, I want to slide this over. I don't know if I like this anymore, but it was stuck down and I got to live with it. Um, so I find this is a very good one if you are trying to extend yourself beyond you know, always being perfect and trying to learn to make mistakes <laughs> because you will. Um, so I do strongly suggest this project um, to anybody and everybody. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you join me next time. And remember to like and subscribe and feel free to make suggestions on what projects you would like for me to do next down below. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day.